Hi, my name is Kellen Gilmore and you're watching The Lauren Project. What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 22 of The LAN Project here in Football Manager 2019. Today we play Cliftonville for the third episode in a row. I'm bored of them, you're probably getting bored of them as well now but they really have been a fawn in our side and well today as you can see here it's their Northern Ireland League Cup final. So a big game for us, we're playing in the hail but uh, well, we'll hopefully we'll be singing in the rain by the end of the game and we can get a win. Of course, if you missed the last episode, go check it out. Since you were last here, two games played, two not-so-great results and an element of deja vu here. You can see, obviously, we lost to Cliftonville last time out 1-0 and uh, then we went on to draw against Coleraine. Uh, earlier on in the year, in back-to-back -back league games, we lost 1-0 to Cliftonville and then drew against Coleraine. This draw against Coleraine, a little bit different to the previous one in that they took the lead in this game. Um, Stat-wise, we had way more shots, but we were struggling to hit the target, and despite creating some pretty good opportunities, we just didn't really take them. They scored a really nice finish through Josh Carson, and in the end, Phoenix Patterson to the rescue. The 89th minute goal was a difference maker, kind of. It, it hauled us back into the game from the very brink, and well, that last minute goal, enough to salvage a point, which actually, I guess at this moment in time, I have to be kind of happy with, all things considering. Could have been a lot, lot worse for us there. And actually, on the same day that we drew this game, um, Glen Glenonville, oh, Glenonville, Cl Glenavon beat Cliftonville. Oh my gosh, the Vils and the Vons. But yes, I, if we just look at, at Glenavon's games, you can see um, that draw that they got, oh, sorry, the win that they got against Cliftonville was a, a, a real rescue mission for us. Brandon Noddy with the goal, actually, that made the difference. So thank you, Oddy. Um, and uh, yes, that, that surrendered uh, a little bit of Cliftonville's grip that they had on us. You know, if we'd drawn that game and they'd won, it'd be a little bit more interesting than it is now where we still remain six points clear. Anyway, in the other game that we played, we took on Harland and Wolf Welders. It was in the Irish Cup sixth round. Very convincing performance here. Simmons playing in a very rotated team and while well, he got a hat-trick and it was a very nice hat-trick to be fair to him. Some really tidy finishes in here. All in all though, you know, playing against lower league opposition in the Cup, um, using this as an opportunity with the Cup final in just a few days time just to rotate the team and rest the team a lot. You might notice that Glatzel was playing in the team for this game yes we've held on to him he has been kicking up an absolute stink as has Tommy O'Donnell both of them had interest shown in them by championship sides and well I refuse to sell both of them because they've got very long contracts still at the club um, but yeah they're, they're, they're here for now they're not that happy about being here but we'll try and manage that situation as best we can and uh, yeah all in all a good little performance this one it was nice to see Jeff Hughes play and all in all Simmons good to see him get a hat trick and hopefully he can build off that going forward so yes, in those last two games, um, we've done okay, you know, but things are ticking along in the league. If we just look here, you can see six points clear ahead of Cliftonville, Glenavon three points behind them, Ballymena also hot on their heels. In terms of the league, if we just look at our fixtures we've got remaining, we have two games left against Dungannon Swifts and Glentoran before the league splits, and then we'll have five more games. So with just seven games left of the season, we're looking pretty good. You can see here, Institute are the team we've been drawn against in the Irish Cup quarterfinal. They play in the division below us, so that's a fairly kind draw there so really at least of the games that we know we're going to be playing right now um, this is the big one isn't it the the cup final in terms of our run to get to this competition I feel like it's worth just reflecting on it just a little bit because um, well it, it's been a good little run really hasn't it all in all you can see here we beat Linfield 7-0 in that second round we then took on Queen University Belfast where we won 3-2 Harland and Wolfwelders we beat obviously 2-0 in that competition as we have done with, well we've beaten them in the Irish Cup and then we of course beat Ballymena 4-1 a little while ago now it feels like a lifetime ago that game had a pretty high attendance we'll be interested to see if we can match that again today um, obviously, one of the aspire to inspire goals for um, LAN is to have an average attendance over a thousand. Uh, when you look at just our home games here and the appearances, we are consistently hitting above that. So that's really, really pleasing to be able to see. You know, we're averaging around probably 1,400, 1,300, somewhere in that vicinity. 
And uh, I hope that we can just keep that going, really. It's, it's really nice to be able to see that and say that when you kind of look at our games. Anyway, in terms of team news going into the cup final today, a little bit of injury news, to be honest. Regis Mandanda, unfortunately, out uh, of today's game. He's going to be on the bench. We, I don't really want to use him if I can avoid it. He's been out with a pulled groin. It's a minor injury, but it's something that I don't really want to aggravate if I can avoid it. Unfortunately for us, Kieran Kane has not raced back to fitness. Of course, twisted his ankle back in January. And uh, he's just not recovered in time. So he's not available at left back. So that doesn't mean Ben Tilney's going to have to come in there. Tommy O'Donnell also has not really made his fitness race work. Uh, 76% condition. As I said, this guy's unhappy at the moment um, because he's been wanted by a few teams. If we just look... You can see here he bruised his ankle in the game against Hollands and Wolfwolders and since then he's just not recovered quite in time. In terms of the teams that were interested, Bristol are the only team still interested in him. But yeah, he was kicking up an absolute stink. Uh, Forrest wanted to join him, uh, or want he wanted to join Forrest, Forrest wanted him to join. I said, go away. They offered, I think, £40,000, which was never going to be enough money, so we've ended up keeping hold of him. Of course, we did make a few sales towards the end of the transfer window. The Delhi Mashiru one went through, so £400,000, I think it was, or £350,000 for him. Record fee received, higher than the record fee that we've spent on a player. I'm pretty happy about that, to be honest. And uh, in terms of another sale that we made, we actually sold Tom Clayton to Dundee. Um, I don't mind this guy, obviously. We took him in as a bit of a punt at the start of this year. We've sold him on for a little bit of money um, in terms of what I expected of him. I don't think he was ever really going to break into the first team. He was signed more because he was available to be signed rather than because he was a player we desperately needed. Um, so yeah, he has gone to Dundee. Not a massive fee, but there is, I think, a sell-on clause involved there, so maybe we can take advantage of that later. Anyway, let's have a look at our team selection for today's game. It's a big game for us. You'll notice there is not a kit clash today, thankfully. In terms of the team, this is the team we're going to go with. We're with both Mandanda and O'Donnell unavailable, Pestridge is going to get the nod here. Of course, the youngster we signed from Crew. Now, I'm hoping that all my coaches are wrong, because I've spent £220,000 on this guy. But... They don't rate his potential. I want him to prove them wrong. I think he can prove them wrong. I mean, I, you, you can see when you flick through your coach reports, different coaches, the ones with different judging player ability and potential are always going to have different opinions on these players. All the ones who have better judging potential seem to think he's better than the ones who think that he's not so good. So with that in mind, I'm pretty sure my scouts are correct in their evaluation of him. Of course, he's a consistent performer as well. He's not the craziest advanced playmaker in the world, but he is very kind of naturally suited to this area of the pitch. And uh, well, the 17-year-old, recently turned 17, is going to get a chance to show us what he can do in his live commentary debut. The rest of the team, we're going to go with Jared Thompson in goal. Nothing too surprising there. Uh, McElhaney is going to play alongside O'Sheen at centre-backs. Uh, Tilney is going to play left-back, unfortunately. Obviously, um, we've not got our first choice left-back Kane back from injury today, so he loses out. We're going to go with Neko Williams at right-back, who, to be fair, in his last few games has been a little underwhelming. So actually, with that in mind, I think we'll give McDermott the nod at right-back. McDermott and kind of O'Sheen kind of been interchanged a little bit, but I think O'Sheen, at least based off current form, probably deserves to start. In the centre of the midfield, we're going to go with Newell, and alongside him we're going to go with Romario Vieira. Nothing too exciting or unusual about that centre mid partnership. They really have forged a link up there. Out on the left, we're going to go with Phoenix Patterson, of course, got that important goal against Coleraine. Centre attack in mid, we're going to go with Prestridge. And then up top, we're going to go with O'Connor, who has hit nine finishing, folks. Can we have a round of applause in the comments? Yes, uh, he had eight finishing it's now gone up to nine hopefully he can keep that improving of course he's the striker who's not so good at shooting which is a little bit odd I feel like they can make a film about it but you can see here his finishing has gone from last April has gone from finishing of eight to finishing of 8.6 his off the ball has gone from 9.6 to 11 and his composure has gone from 11.2 to 12.2 so there's continual improvement there as a striker and at the age of 18 I'm pretty confident he can really find his feet as a striker in our system um, so that's something really good there, actually, the fact that he's continued his development. And, of course, up top for the game today, we are going to go with Simmons. Got a hat-trick in his last game. Let's see what he can do today. On the bench, we have got options. 
We've got Kevin McGrath, who of course can cover the centre-back position for us. We've then got Neko Williams at right-back, Fouad Sul at centre defence in mid, Bradley Lyons and Bandanda, two centre-mid options, and then striking options. We've got Paul Glatzel, who is unhappy, but is still here, and unfortunately for him, he has a four-year deal at the club with an optional three-year extension, so I intend to keep him here for the foreseeable future. And alongside him, we've also got Rory Jarvis, who I really do like the look of a lot. Hasn't hit the ground running by any means, but maybe he could turn hero if we need to turn to him in the final today. Anyway, let's get straight into this. The competition that we won last year, we want to win it again if possible. Their team is very strong. Donnelly considered their key player. You can see here, 25 goals in 28 games. He's, he's a bit scary, so we're going to have to keep him quiet if we can. All in all, though, we want a bit of revenge. We lost to them last episode. The episode before that, we beat their kind of second-string team in the Irish uh, Cup, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was the Irish Cup we played them in. I'm 99.9% .9 sure it was. But, um, yeah, we go into this game really wanting to get some revenge, but it's not going to be easy. Without O'Donnell and Mandanda, we kind of lack that linchpin advanced playmaker in our team that we really do call upon. And so Pesterage... I feel like we should click on him so we've always got his name above his head. He is going to be a player under the microscope today. His condition is not fantastic, as he did play midweek, but we don't really have any other choice. So, um, yeah, we'll have to keep an eye and see how he gets on. The rest of the team, though, very, very good. You can see in the opening 20 minutes here, nothing really happening, although a set-piece maybe. Newell whips it in. Simmons back post. Doesn't even challenge for it in the end. Could they hit us on the counter here? It's going to be what they try to do. Gormley holding up the play. Gets on ahead to Donnelly, who we know is lethal in front of goal. What a block that is by McElhaney. The captain leading from example there, bailing us out. That was that was concerning. Why are all our fans ginger? Answers on a postcard. Right, it's Donnelly, edge of the box here to Holden. Can we stop it getting in? We can. Nice defending. That was a clear-cut chance to Cliftonville. McElhaney's block was very, very heroic there. The chances, though, potentially not over. Is this the pointless highlight? It is the pointless highlight. You never know. Sometimes you do get the highlights back to back. It's always nervous. I feel like when you get that corner immediately after a clear cut chance. Anyway, we've got a set piece of our own here. Newell dinking it into the centre. Cleared away as far as Romario Vieira. Goes back wide. Newell. Second time of asking maybe. Goes to O'Sheen. Romario Vieira. Pestridge. Have a go. Have a go, my son. Show us why you're worth 200 grand. O'Connor. Drifting in from the right hand side. Dispossessed. Going all the way back to McDermott here. Please do not be... So slow on the ball, McDermott. Now with Jared Thompson. For a second, I thought the back pass was going to go flying in, but we deal with it okay. They've got so many men forward here. Oh, gosh, that is not ideal by, I think, McDermott there. I'm not sure who it was. It was McDermott. Questionable first touch. Gave them an opportunity. It was actually a clear-cut chance, so a bit of a let-off again. Cliftonville perhaps starting the better of the two teams here. I need to tell the players to push forward, I think, get a bit more out of them if we can. Pesteridge trying to find a way forward, but they are pressing really heavily. Oh my gosh, Jared Thompson in the final. <sighs> Jared, 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 what are you doing? Just, if in doubt, boot it out. <sighs> I don't know what to say about that. Just, just, just watch it. 30 minutes gone, Joe Gormley scores for them. That is not the start to the final we wanted. Cliftonville this year have really been a thorn in our side. I do not appreciate it at Cliftonville. Do not appreciate it one little bit. We're really struggling to get a, a grip on possession in this game for sustained periods of time, it seems. It's been pretty 50-50, whereas we do like to control the ball in spells. Maybe we need to um, look to ch ch tweak things a little bit here. We've got to defend this, though. Gormley goes to O'Donnell. I mean, Jared Thompson may maybe makes some amends there I'm still not entirely sure let's go with shorter passing and um, just kind of work things a little bit more perhaps um, when we have it, I feel like we just need to try and get maybe our foot on the ball just um, be a little bit, not necessarily slower but just a little bit more concise with our passing, shorter passing I think just to hold the ball less of these risky big balls forward, although we've got a chance here Phoenix on the left hand side can't beat the first man unfortunately this has been not a particularly classic first half for us thus far. 40 minutes gone. We've only had one half chance. Another set piece for us, but you struggle to see it amounting to a lot. Newell whips it in. Simmons. Romario Vieira, maybe I'm getting a sense of deja vu here. Have a go, son. McElhaney, don't have a go. You do not have it in your locker to score from here. I mean, is that a foul? It is a foul. I feel like this is the pointless highlight after I've made some tactical changes. Indeed it is. I just want to play the game. Game. 
my double clicking mouse curse comes back again just wanting to pause the game when I click I mean that's not the start to the first half we wanted a defensive howler the difference I expect to see a much better showing in the second half who looks demoralised? Pesteridge. I'm going to tell him I've got faith. I'm going to go to him individually. He's still, he's still demotivated. I don't know if I want to risk Mandanda. I don't think it's worth it. I'm going to take off Pesteridge and we're going to bring in Brad Lyons to start the second half. I want players who mentally are there. Obviously, Brad Lyons, he's, he's okay as an advanced playmaker. He can kind of do the role for us. It's just really his first touch that lets him down a little bit. He's not standout in it. He's kind of captain consistent Lions. I was hoping he'd develop more this year. He hasn't been a nailed on starter in the team, but he has made over, I think, 25 starts this season. Anyway, they've got a chance here. Whipped in. That was a bit close. That was a bit close. They grazed the crossbar from the set piece. That would not have been the ideal start to the second half. Hmm, how do I want to change things here? That's That's really the question on my lips right now. How do I want to change things? I think we might switch to a slightly more conventional shape in terms of I'm going to play a 4-2-3-1, I think. Maybe something like this. Patterson's been really poor out on the left. But I don't have a left winger on the bench unless I want to move O'Connor to left inside forward and then maybe bring on someone like Glatzel. I don't know if I want to bring on Glantzel because his morale's so bad and he's been really poor. But then that means that I have to bring on Rory Jarvis, who hasn't scored for us yet. I mean, if there's a time to score Rory and be a hero, this is it, I guess. So I think that is what we'll go with. I should really pause the game while I'm doing these changes. Um, let's scrap the, the shorter passing. Not even too worried about whipping it into the box. We'll look for the overlap on both wings, I think. Try and stretch team, the team wide. Out of possession, I mean, yeah, we, we need to press now. We need to try and make something happen, I feel like. Um, let's go with that. Let's go with that. Double change coming in. Obviously, Brad Lyon's already on the pitch, going to play that advanced playmaker role. Although, actually, hmm. See, I could play him as more of a shadow striker, which might suit his skill set just a little bit better. Newell here probably needs to go to ball winning midfielder on defend. The issue with the system that we play, the asymmetric system, is it's not very easy to adapt to just be more attacking. Like, there isn't really an easy way to just change it and have it work. But I think this is probably the best that we can do here. So we'll go with it. In terms of options I've got on the bench, obviously I've got Glatzel who I could bring in. But besides him, uh, I mean, it would be lovely to have Mandanda available, wouldn't it, really? Because he's been the creative linchpin in our team. And in a game where we're not creating a lot, you'd like... To think he could be the difference maker. Anyway, Simmons here. Poor touch by him. He's going to be switching wings with this ball going out of play. We're in uncharted territories here, folks. We're going to a, a traditional 4-2-3-1. You perhaps never thought you'd see the day. But we need a roll of the dice. And as I said, our current tactical system doesn't lend itself so well to kind of changing things drastically. I mean, there's still half an hour left in this game to make things happen. So plenty of time to try and turn it around. And well, can we start here? Romario Vieira to O'Connor. Can he get it out of his feet? He just can't quite. And while they deal with the ball here, bringing it forward now with Gormley, who's already got one goal to his name, although it was... I mean, I don't want the Jared Thompson howler to be the difference maker, but with us taking a bit of the roll of the dice here and going more attacking, we are going to be leaving ourselves more exposed at the back. But well, O'Connor, on the left wing, can he make something happen here? Not his strongest foot that he's trying to put the ball into there. And um, why is why is the game switched to full match? I did think I noticed stuff change there. Right. Back we go to our regular settings. That's weird. I was sat thinking the replay is playing out really slowly. But then I was like, maybe the players are just tired. Time is slipping away. Newell, set piece, takes it. Grazes the crossbar. Grazes the crossbar. Romario Vieira is on a booking. I'm going to do what could potentially be one of the most stupid, pointless risks I've ever taken. Mandanda... He's going to come on and play advanced playmaker for the last 10 minutes. I, he's got a bad injury. It's a roll of the dice, but we need our main man, I feel like. I did have the option to give him injections to get him through today's game, but it would have kept him out for so long. I didn't want to do it. Gormley's through for them here. Jared, Jared, Jared. Oh, I need a new keeper. I need a new keeper. Jared Thompson in the final. What was that? 
What was that? Joe Gormley scores again. You'd have to say they deserve it. They've created the better opportunities for Outcut than Villain. Well, in an attempt to get the ball forward quicker, to press higher, they've sprung the offside track. Jared Thompson, you've got to do better than that there, son. And Cliftonville going to stick the knife in our back and twist it just a little bit because they, they well, they deserve it, but they, they've been a pain for us this year. We're not going to win the Football League Cup. Of course, the Irish Cup's still the crown jewel, I feel like, of the domestic cups here in Northern Ireland. But, I mean, whatever way you look at it, whatever way you look at it, this has been disappointing, hasn't it? Let's be honest. We've not turned up, we've not created enough. Was it a mistake to bring on Roy Jarvis? You can't even really pin the blame on him. He's he's not been around, obviously. Missing Mandanda was always going to be a big factor here, I feel like. But to go down without a fight hurts a little bit. And, well, it's our first cup final defeat here at Larn. I'm hoping it's the last. It probably won't be. But it does make us remember and, well, have to consider the fact we are still human at the end of the day. Well, you know, we, we are beatable. Jared Thompson... Just completely capitulated. Boys, I'm not happy with the performance out there. I know we were missing our main player, but it's still no excuse to go down like that. We received £4,000, which is not great. I've had this offer accepted for Hazard, who I'm currently scouting. Um, funnily enough, before this game, I was looking at goalkeepers. Yes, um, this guy, Connor Hazard, plays for Celtic. He looks pretty good. Um, you'll notice he's 21 and he actually turns 22 in March, so I need to have the agreement done. Even though he'd be joining us when he's 22, he would kind of still abide by our philosophies because the deal would be signed and the transfer arranged while he's still underaged. He might be the solution if he's interested in talking to us, which it seems like he might be. So, yeah, it's kind of funny, actually. I was already looking at a replacement for Jared Thompson before the game. Maybe that's what the game... The game's seen me doing that and has gone, right, he's looking at signing another goalkeeper. Let's make sure he definitely wants to sign this new keeper. So yeah, Conor Hazard, we're going to scout him a little bit more. We'll probably know by next episode exactly what's going on with him because, as I said, the deal kind of has to be done. He's already on a fairly large wage at Celtic, so I imagine he's going to want a pretty large contract here to um, well, want to join us. Um, I, w I want to do the press conferences because I did a really good job at the start of this year of um, doing all the press conferences with this series. You know, every every game pretty much for the first season I was doing them. Right, Connor, how much do you want a week? This is where I'm a little bit scared, because he's already on 1.8 grand a week. So I feel like he's going to want monster money. Oh my god, I do not have that kind of money. I wish I did have that kind of money, Connor. Things I don't know how good he is yet. I don't know how good he is yet, but if he's if he's really good, like if he's notably better... Then obviously I'm gonna I'm gonna make that transfer happen. Question is, do I want to give him a massive signing on fee to try and convince him that despite the lack of wages, it's gonna be worth it? He also wants a minimum release clause to foreign clubs. I mean that has to go. Oh, this is not gonna end well. This negotiation is it? This is not gonna end well. I mean, do I want to? I'm not gonna have that many options when it comes to a goalkeeper. I need to see how well how good he is kind of by scouting him which we are in the process of doing before I commit to this but I feel like given how Jared Thompson's just played I have to commit with the mindset of I need to sign a new first choice goalkeeper and this guy might be the best that we can get so maybe I do need to just put in a not a stupid offer but a larger offer than perhaps you'd normally expect to see me offer because the goalkeeper position is well it's interesting goalkeepers in FM I don't feel like they're make or break. I don't feel like a world-class goalkeeper is better than like a star goalkeeper in that sense. But sometimes you just have a goalkeeper that you have no trust in and they just don't seem to perform. And Jared Thompson is kind of falling into that bracket, unfortunately. You know what? I think that even if I offer this contract, he's just going to completely outright reject it because I've removed so much and lowered the wage demands by two grand. I mean, we'll submit it because it's the best we can do. But yeah, that, that deal is not going to happen. And I don't know if we'll have time to go in for him again before he turns 22 because it's happening in less than a month's time. Speaking of things happening in a less of less than a month's time, we have also got intake day coming up. So that could be interesting. Obviously, we have been upgrading our facilities um, here at Larn. 
We can have a look at them actually on the club page here. Facilities, um, you know, we've got adequate training facilities, um, adequate youth facilities, very basic youth recruitment. We've also got our new head of youth development, which is good. Hopefully, um, Sandy Fridge here, what a name it is, um, is going to help us out with the recruitment of players. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a standout personality, but it's not a bad one by any means for bringing in players. Um, so that's going to be on our radars. I don't know if that will have happened by next episode. I guess it depends on when the draw of games happens for the matches upcoming. But yeah, we now have to switch focus to the Irish Cup and, well, try and get over the line in the league. Cliftonville, you'd feel like they're not going to make things easy for us. We're going to have to play the top five again after the league split. Um, so some particularly challenging games on the horizon, maybe. And Well, there's no such thing as a free win here, is there? Anyway, guys, that's going to be all from me today. Hopefully you did enjoy today's episode. If you did, a like would be super appreciated. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.